Hello everybody, I hope you can hear my green light's on. Please let me know if the sound is working as usual, just so I know I haven't made a botch. Uh, uh, Paul Ducklin from Sophos, uh, Naked Security. It's Friday afternoon, it's our usual uh, Facebook Live. Oh, it's asking me to share my video with my friends. Um, I haven't made it yet. I mean, I suppose that's a vote of confidence, right? If they're saying, share it, you don't even know how, how good or bad it's going to be yet. It's still urging me to share it. Um, so if you see that, do share it with your friends, um, but do let me know if you can hear. So you can probably see the topic for today. You may have read the story on Naked Security. If you live in the UK, you may have received one of these scams because the one that I wrote about, I received right here in, in, in England. And the title is SMS Scams, Keep Yourself and Your Family Safe. So let's go through what we mean by that and what you can do. So I've got a, Julian's watching all loud and clear, Karen, Adwen, Luann Jones, many of your names I recognise, some of them I'm afraid they've scrolled off on a mobile phone, the comments go past pretty quickly. So those I haven't given a shout to, um, thanks for joining. Um, Karen, welcome back, I know you you uh, you join us regularly. Who else has just come? Peter Marshall, Karen O'Halloran Cooney, it's fine. Excellent. Well, I'm glad it's fine because that suggests that you haven't had a cybersecurity disaster lately. So let's go straight on to it and look at um, what's called SMS phishing, or for short, smishing. Uh, now, if you live in Belgium, I know that the, the, the government cert actually put out a warning about smishing being uh, an upcoming thing in Belgium. Apparently, they've had a big problem with it there. Um, you do get these scams in the US. I know that because several of my colleagues have forwarded me some lately. They're very often their parcel delivery scams. You've probably seen those. You know, you in lockdown, we're getting home deliveries and we don't necessarily know which courier company is going to do the delivery. So, <clears throat> you know, we, we get a message saying, couldn't deliver the parcel, click here to find out more. And of course, we know that things like pizza companies, food delivery, banks, stuff like that, when they're queuing systems, generally they still use SMS, text messages, even though they're old school, even though they're not internet cool and they're not Instagram or WhatsApp or anything like that, Businesses still make good use of SMS because they work on any device. You don't have to wonder whether the person's got a feature phone or an Android or an iPhone. You send a message and it appears. And here's the one that I received. Uh, so here's the message I got. Now, I imagine that in this case, what the crooks are doing, and this is, this is very common with prepaid mobiles, that when you get a new SIM card, or even when you get a business account, for quite a while you get messages for other people from, from the last guy who had the phone, don't you? Because somebody had the number before you in all likelihood, or somebody's got a number mixed up, invariably you get messages, and there's often a name that repeats itself, and you assume it's the person who had the phone before and you kind of ignore them but you often you find myself wondering hey I wonder what that person was all about because when I got my phone first phone when I moved back to the UK I got messages for ages from a company trying to sell me a boiler upgrade even though I didn't have a gas supply it turned out it was it was the person who'd had the phone before so this is what I got I hope you can read that uh, let me I'll try and line it up because I got the thing reversed it says uh, dear Christopher, um, and it gives my address. It says uh, Ballynagard Crescent, London Dairy. Now, um, <laughs> I live in England, not in Northern Ireland. Dairy is, of course, at the at the north uh, western edge of Northern Ireland. So. It's unlikely if you just pick that randomly as a, as a town in the United Kingdom. The population's comparatively small, but that address does exist. I went and looked on, on, on Google Maps. It's a perfectly normal looking residential street. I presume they've just plucked it from the map. So if you go and look, it does exist. But presumably the idea is that I'm looking at this, I think, I wonder who this Christopher guy is. Maybe I'll click through the link. So there, there, there's this air of mystique and the, the crooks are obviously hoping. Now, now, I hope none of you would click through because it just looks like somebody's trying it on. But it is tempting, isn't it? You, even if your name's not Christopher, you know you don't live there. You think, hey, I wonder what Christopher's order. I wonder what, Chris, what freebie Christopher's got coming. Because it does sound like it's actually aimed at a person, not dear customer or hello or something like that. 
The other, so the thing about SMS is, A, they're very short. They're only 160 characters. So for crooks who aren't that good at English and who wouldn't be able to construct a realistic email to scam you, SMSs are a complete blessing because it's very difficult to make a spelling or a grammatical mistake in 160 characters. It's easy to copy and paste other people's correct English. And more importantly, the SMSs that you get from legitimate companies tend to use a very crisp, short, stilted sort of English. Lots of comments here. Sorry to be flippant, but you really suit your hair long. Surprised you shaved it, I thought you were bald. Well, it's very, it's very kind of you to say so, Richard. I'm quite pleased with how it's coming on with six months more forcible working from home in the UK. I, I'm wondering how big it's going to get. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, it's an experiment I'm looking forward to conducting. So as I was saying, the, the thing with SMS is it's really easy for crooks to get the language right because people expect abbreviations, clipped sentences, they don't need lots of dear so-and-so and hail fellow well met and all the pleasantries that you normally get in colloquial English. Even more importantly, if you think about a text message, it is just SMS, short message service. It's just text. There's no such thing as a URL. So if you want to put a URL in, in, URL in there, like you might in, say, a tweet, it counts towards your 160 characters. So when businesses send SMSs, they're still tending to use those URL shortening services. And if you look there where it says Londonderry Ballynagard Crescent, the same length of text, the URL shorter than that. They've used a shortening service, and because legitimate companies do it, even though with a URL shortening you can't see where you're really going, it's all something like xx.test slash and then four or five characters. If legitimate companies do it, then unfortunately the crooks can do it too. Now in this case, if you do tap through, of course, now you jump on your phone, you jump out of your messaging app and you jump straight into your browser, now the crooks can go to town. And in this case, they pretended to be an Apple chatbot. It's quite amusing to look at. There's a video of it on, on Naked Security. Um, I hope you can see that. I've got the phone the weird way around this way with my camera, so I hope I'm lining that up correctly. Uh, hello, Christopher. Congratulations. Blah, blah, blah. You've, you, you're, you're an important person and you qualified for an Apple 2020 iPhone 12 promo. Everyone's excited about the iPhone 12. Hasn't been announced yet when it's coming out. Obviously, some people are going to get them early. Hey, maybe Christopher was one of them. So the trick here is that it plays you this chat bot, you click through, and suddenly you can claim the phone just as if you're... So you can pretend to be Christopher. Except, and here's the sort of reverse psychology that the crooks used in this scam. Regrettably, I think this was a little bit clever. Now, you shouldn't fall for it, but you can see why it tricks you. It said, oh, first, we just need to check who you are. So what's your name? And you have to specify your full name. And there's a choice of names, but only one of them is Christopher somebody. So you can solve that easily. The next thing it says, which city do you live in? And there's London, and there's Manchester, and there's Birmingham. And at the bottom, there's Derry. And you think, ooh. I'm onto something here. And then comes up, which street do you live in? And lo and behold, the answers to the questions that the crooks are asking were in the original text. So it's kind of like they're, they're doing this sort of reverse authentication. So I can see why some people would be inclined to believe this can't be out of the blue. It wasn't for me, but it must have been really for Christopher because that's the address that was on record and now he's being asked to confirm it. Now I tried the scam several times. It doesn't really matter what you ask, but the, just putting that text in there that reinforces the, the, the options in the website that reinforce what you've seen in the text. You can see how it somehow makes this seem much more personal, much more involved, much more direct, much more realistic than it would be if it was just, dear customer, you've qualified. And of course, at the end, well, it's a free phone, but folks, as usual, it isn't a free phone. There's a delivery charge. I try, there are various different landing pages that you end up on. I found three or four, two or three different ones where I ended up. The charge varies between, on this particular scam, it was between one and two pounds sterling that you had to pay for delivery charge. And of course, the reason the crooks need you to pay the modest amount is then they get to 
then they get to put you at a, at a credit card page. So they're looking for your credit card details. It looks reasonably legitimate. And when you put your card details in, of course, grinds away for a while. So I'm terribly sorry that card was declined. Now, in this case, that's how they ended it. Sometimes the crooks say, why don't you try another card? Obviously hoping that you'll give away a second lot of a long card number and CVV code and expiry date, which is, of course, enough for them to go straight online and, sp and go on a spending spree on your account. So that's the scam. The idea is it doesn't start with an email. It doesn't feel as fishy as it would be if it's an email. And it has a short link, but that's what SMSs do to this day, whether they come from a bank or a courier company or whatever. They haven't got space to put a huge long URL. So they use a shortening service that redirects you. And the idea is that by telling you this is for Christopher, Christopher, giving you a bogus but believable address that does indeed exist, and then matching it in the website, you can see the psychology they're using to try to suck you in. So very quickly, let's just see if there are some questions. Uh, just people watching, so not actual questions. Sorry if you've asked questions and they've, and they've scrolled off the screen and I missed them. I'm terribly sorry. I can only see the last two things that come up, whether somebody's watching or asked a question. So I suspect I've missed a lot, but don't worry. What we always do with these videos is afterwards, go back and answer the questions that we didn't have time. It also means, folks, if you're watching later, you're welcome to ask questions. That, um, we'll follow up on questions, even if they're asked when you're watching later and it's not actually live. So let's go through the simple tips. We put them on the article. Now, I'm not really putting these here for you guys who are watching now. I'm sure that if you're minded to watch a video like this, you probably know what to look out for already. What I'm doing is trying to give you some points of argument that you can use to help other people, your friends, your family, even colleagues in a work environment, even if you're working all over the place. Everybody's at home. Everybody's doing home deliveries. People are probably getting more SMSs, probably getting more scams than ever. And we all need to look out for each other. And I know very sadly, because this, ha uh, this happened to a, a friend of mine, uh, a problem that he had, his own dad, uh, you know, got scammed by those fake support call guys, not once, but twice. Um, there are probably many of you out there who have what you might call at-risk relatives. People, not because they're, it's not because they're unintelligent um, or that they're particularly gullible, just they're at risk because they're, they're easily scared or easily excited by things online and they don't necessarily have the experience to tell the right from the wrong, the good for the bad, the legit from the places that are going to just leech their money. So these tips are really for you to help argue, to, to bring along other people, not argue, that's the wrong word, bring your friends and your family or colleague along to make sure that they don't fall for this stuff either. There's also a video we actually went, I went through the whole scam uh, and made a little one minute video, which you can find on nakedsecurity.sophos.com. I'll put the link uh, in the video, uh, above the video when it's finished. By just watching that, you see how these things typically pay out, play out. And by not rushing it, by not just instantly saying, you must put in your password immediately, draws you on towards the point where you think you're just paying a pound. And at that point, the crooks have got you. So by showing that video to other people, you may be able to help them falling um, for stuff like this. So the tips, the, the advice that you can pass on to other people, I've got, I've got um, four tips here. I'll go through them quickly. Firstly, plain and simple, there is no free phone. You'll get free phone offers all the time on the internet, by email, by instant messaging, by text message. There is no free phone. Oh, and by the way, if there were a free phone, you wouldn't have to pay one pound for it, would you? And the one pound, of course, is the trick. It sounds like all I've got to lose is one pound. In fact, all you've got to lose is your credit card number, the CVV, and enough for the crooks to take as much as they want. So if you see something to do with a free phone, just forget it. It's not going to happen. It never did and it never will. The second thing is, and I've said this before, keep your eyes open for clues. Usually, if you go back or if you watch the video that I put on Naked Security, you'll notice that for all that this is reasonably believable in terms of its language and its grammar, there are some mistakes. If you have even a basic fluency in English and you read carefully, even if you sit still and you follow with your finger for a minute, you will notice mistakes that are either obvious if you're a native speaker of English or that you can remember, oh, my teacher told me that was the wrong way to do it. You will spot that this thing is not legitimate. There are just enough telltales in there that if you take the time, you will spot the mistakes. 
The problem is when you're in a hurry or you're pressurized by the crooks and at the end of this one, when it comes to actually claiming the phone, there's a little two minute countdown. So it puts you under a little bit of pressure at the end. It's when you rush that you make mistakes. So stop, think, connect as the US National Cybersecurity Awareness guys say, it makes an awful lot of difference. Also, when you can, check where a link is going. And remember that with a URL shortener, that link is where you're going and that website directs you to the next one. So actually with a shortened link, you can't check where you will end up until you get there. But then look carefully in the address bar and with your friends and family, teach them that on a mobile phone, what they see in the address bar is probably just the very beginning, the very left-hand end of uh, the URL that they're going to visit. So if the text that they see says visa.uk.com, what probably means is that after that it goes dot a whole load of other stuff, and it's the stuff at the end, off the right-hand end of the screen, or off the other end of the screen if you're in Israel or the Middle East and you write the other way around. But it's the stuff that you can't see at the end of the URL that is the important point because it's the dot domain dot com at the end that determines who owns it. So don't just look at the beginning of the address bar where you see text like your bank's name dot com. If it's followed by something like that could mean tapping in the address bar and taking the time again to scroll to check where you're going. Also, if you are in a browser on your phone, it's difficult to see where a link goes. You can't just hover your mouse over it like you can and just wait a moment for it to pop up like you can on, on, on a laptop browser. But generally speaking, if you tap but don't let go, hold down for a little while, then it will pop up and say, show you the link you're going to go there and ask if you really want to. And you can bail out at that point if anything looks wrong. And basically, you need to back yourself. If you think I should go and ask my friend or my, my IT helpmate whether this is a scam, if you're already inclined to think it's a scam, just assume that it is. Because believe me, A, you're probably right, and B, there are plenty more where that one came from. And lastly, particularly if you're uh, doing IT for a business and you've got you know, people mixing home and work as they inevitably need to in these coronavirus times, consider using something like a VPN that lets people from home connect back through the office network so you can control their web browsing and consider using a web filter. And the flip side of that, if, you're, if your office says to you, hey, you're going to have to start using a web filter for all your browser, Please don't rail at it. Web filtering is not really about surveillance. It can be, but in any well-run company, it shouldn't be. Web filtering is about online security and online safety. It's about stopping you going to a bad link in the first place so you don't even begin to get into harm's way. And as I've said before, protecting from the crooks these days, it's not just about stopping malware coming in and landing on your computer or your phone which wouldn't have happened in this case, right? There was no malware coming in. Cybersecurity is also about keeping the good stuff in so you don't send genuine data outwards. Oh, just more people watching. So uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Just to quickly to go through the tips again. There is no free phone. Tell your friends and family. Just ignore it. Skip straight away. Don't even show any interest. Don't go there. It's going to end in tears. Look out for any clues. If the crooks do make a mistake, make them pay for it. If there's a spelling mistake or a link mistake or a company name mistake, or they write one pound sign. In the UK, we write our currency the other way around. The pound sign comes first. If they make that mistake, they don't know what they're doing. Leave. Catch them out. Make them pay for it. Check links before you click them. And consider for a work network using something like a VPN and a web filter, which can stop your users getting into harm in the first place. So thanks for listening, everybody, and until next time, stay secure.